Why is it important for the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture to hear about climate change now? Well, I think there's been a lot of arguments about how they, they certainly know now the importance of genetic resources today, but there's been very little looking at how that changes into the future. And so what we've been doing is looking at how, with climate change, the interdependence between countries, i.e. The, the, the demand for these genetic resources internationally, how that's changing. And it's actually quite, quite interesting. It's quite staggering how it changes. You showed an example of how Zimbabwe in 2050 will be like Democratic Republic of Congo today. But how does Zimbabwe make use of that? There's, I mean, there's, there's two major hurdles to get over. One is having the right policy in place. And so that's about accessing these, these, these potential benefits from genetic resources. So it's, it's policy that allows a movement of, of, of seed uh, and varieties. The second is also the, the phytosanitary issues, so overcome some of the dangers of moving material around the world. And so we've had a, a number of scares over the world where, where um, uh, funguses or insects or some phytosanitary problems with the movement of germplasm, we need to ensure that we that we can move germplasm safely without those problems, but that movement is critical for adaptation. Okay, so Zimbabwe becomes like DR Congo, but do you have a sense for how things change globally? So what, one of the studies that we did for the background paper is looking at um, how, with the projections of climate change, how global climates become more similar. So what we find is that actually the world contracts in, its, in, in all its heterogeneity of climates and gets more similar on the whole. So 98% of countries actually are going to become more similar to other countries. So what that means is that Congo, for example, will for example, dip, provide very useful stuff for Zimbabwe, but likewise Congo will have other countries that could be providing all sorts of interesting materials that are very highly site-specifically uh, uh, adapted for, for the Congo. Even if countries are becoming more like one another, you still need a global system for genetic resources. So how close are we to a system like that? Um, I'd say we're still a long way away. Uh, there's still a lot of barriers that, uh, in the practice, whilst the policy might be dictating that we can exchange materials quite freely, the, in practice it's still very difficult for a lot, of, a lot of scientists, a lot of researchers, and a lot of development practitioners. And so, so we can just we need to work on getting over, over some of those, those hurdles still, but that's a lot of it is at the national level nowadays. And does the Commission have a role in that? And the Commission has a role in, in first of all, just, just continually communicating the importance of this, um, and second of all, in, in, in creating the, helping create these systems that do allow exchange. So, what did you come away with from the meeting? I mean, what else did you find? Impressive. I suppose the, com the complexity of what a production system entails. So you have microbiological resources, you've got aquatic resources, you have, you have livestock. And so um, it's all connected and it's all very much needed. And so I suppose the complexity of the, of the genetic resource problem um, is, I, I tend to have seen it in the past as just plants or plants and livestock and there's a lot more to it. So how do you pull it all together? The way around it is to look at it from an ecosystem perspective, but that then gets very complex and very, very difficult to manage. And so, so everyone goes back to their silos, and that's, that's the classic problem of multidisciplinary science. Are you hopeful, more hopeful than you were when you arrived, or is it just part of the process? No, I think so. I think if you, you, in these meetings 10 years ago, it would have been a battlefield about people denying that genetic resources should be exchanged and it would have been very complex. I think today people realize that each country is dependent on other countries and it's all one big system and everyone depends on others. And so I think, I think that, that you've got a very great foundation for then positive, constructive discussion.